we are in the dark <laughs> and uh, I want to welcome you to our sixth film in our little series pattern of the month. Uh, the days are getting shorter, the nights are getting darker, uh, it's well, it's the last days of summer and we we coming into fall and uh, actually it's like this that I think we can find some of the best fish this time of the year uh, in the dark and uh, not only the big broad-backed uh, fantastic sea trout but also some of the biggest and best salmon uh, the big fish will be easier to fool in the dark uh, when I fish a dark, uh, uh, a fly for the dark, there's a few things that's important and I, I like to have a really good silhouette. And remember not to fish the fly too deep. You need to have it so the fish can see it against the light uh, sky. Um, a good silhouette. Also, I want to have a fly with a lot of motion to it. Uh, very often we find the fish in a little bit slower water maybe with the slick surface uh, the silhouette and the moving fly is key things but also one thing that I found very 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 um, effective in the dark especially uh, this time of the year when it gets really dark that is phosphor and to have a fly that will glow in the dark so if it's three things for my my night flights it's the good silhouette it's the soft materials with a fly that will really move in a good way and it's a fly that's pimped with a bit of phosphor. I have two patterns. I show you what I have on my rod here. Uh, it's uh, a crocken and one of my favorite flies is absolutely the crocken but also Barrett Bimbo and both these flies are pimped with phosphorescent material and what I'm going to tie you today it's like a mix between a, it is a crocken but it's influenced by Barrett Bimbo to get a little bit of noise uh, the noisy material is very effective for sea trout but also for salmon it will make the fish locate the fly in a better way so hope you will enjoy tie, uh, the tying now and um, i will do that tomorrow <laughs> first i'm gonna go back on the river here and see if i can catch another good fish on one of these phosphorescent flies so hope you enjoyed the tying later on So, okay, uh, here we are again. Uh, it's our sixth little film. It's gonna be on night fishing. And uh, do you like fishing in the, in the dark? Uh, not all people do. It's tricky, you don't see what you do. Uh, it maybe demands a little bit more experience, but also, uh, especially on sea trout, but also on, on salmon uh, late season, uh, the best fish are caught in the dark uh, and the flies in the dark like I just said in this little introduction and they, they, they have to be a bit special and uh, there's three important things it's the silhouette it's the movement since the fish in the dark tend to move in closer to shore and into the slack of water it's even more important to have a fly that's actually tied from very very soft materials to make it a lot of motion and then i like to have phosphorescent material in my flies i like them to glow a bit especially on citra it's deadly effective uh, so i'm gonna tie a crocken today uh, and it's gonna be pimped a bit, uh, like I said before, uh, from the Barrett Bimbo. And when you tie crocken, you can do this in uh, a different ways. You, uh, and it's the hackle. Of course, there's a million ways and millions of materials. But when I tie mine, 
I um, do it uh, in a bit different way. And I'm going to show you the three versions. I can start by showing you because I have the three here. I have the one that's hackled uh, with an ostrich in a normal way, where it's wound in front of the wing with a turbo disc. This is... Um, it's the way I started and it's, uh, it's, uh, it gives a good volume. The hackle will help to create the drop form. It's really, really nice. Uh, another way of doing it is to tie the ostrich hackle in in a different way. And that is to tie the ostrich in as a body hackle. Bit trickier, but it gives a lot of motion and a lot of volume to the fly. And then the third one, of course, and the one that I'm, I'm really in love with these flies, it's the butterfly way of doing them, where you take the ostrich and put it flat on top of the body. So, we're going to start tying this uh, little odd fly, but a super good uh, night fly. And also today I'm going to uh, show you a little bit more on, on our tool uh, kit project uh, and I've been showing you some before and I had many many mails and and I should thank you for all the good feedback we get on these films and uh, on all these mail uh, and all the mails we get but we have also had a lot of questions when the tools will be out and they'll be out probably six out of nine in about a month's time so I'm gonna start showing you this this is a little tubing cutter. It's never been on the market before and I've been using a thing like this before. There are four holes uh, for our four dimensions on tubing and you just put the uh, tube in and you decide how long you, long you want it and you cut it. And you have the tube with the perfect edge. Very, very simple. Uh, but also a very, very handy little tool to have, especially if you want to make those um, tubes the same length all the time. So today I'm going to tie with uh, the glow tubing. It's uh, very highly phosphorescent. I can actually take a, a spool of those and go into the closet and read the newspaper. It's it's. It's really, really strong. I'm going to use that and then I'm going to use an extra small uh, magenta. So a medium glow and extra small magenta. And what I do, I start by cutting. And when I cut, I cut this little edge here. So I can have the thread hold the extra small tubing. When I cut, now you see uh, I used my scissor here and uh, when a little bit on the tools, we have two scissors. They will be one uh, curved one, a uh, crooked one we call it, and one straight one. And they're uh, tungsten carbide, super high quality. I've been using this now for two years, tying a lot of flies and it's still as sharp as before. So it's really, really good. Uh, I'm going to use a 12 volt thread today. I'm going to do uh, like I do with most of my flies. I'm going to do a black one and I start by putting on the thread on the extra small and I move it up and I make sure this thread will hold the extra small. If I do it without glue, I get a flexible uh, tube and I get a flexible fly, a very much stronger fly. When uh, the two things are put together, I just move back the thread. And when I use a, a black thread onto a, like the tube like this, I can't go back with the thread and then wind the Mirage material over because the thread will be seen through. So I'll start with the Mirage and I move it back. And on this fly where I want the fly to be phosphorescent uh, I leave maybe a little bit more of the bare tube 
and also the phosphor will shine through the mirage and do a really really nice little uh, shine to it okay then i'm going to use uh dubbing this time um uh, not the glitz one uh, uh, the, the, our dubbing is is made uh, on a translucent material i'm going to use uh, a magenta one and i'm just going to put on a little bit of a tag here so i just dub on a bit of this make sure that i tie it in so it's round and rather fat and with like with all material uh, dubbing materials you need to take a little bit too much it needs to be uh, a bit overdressed and i move down the thread take the brush you've seen the brush before it will look a little bit different the one with the silver part but the actual brush which I, it will be the same and uh, I say this is the meanest brush I've ever used it's super super effective and I just brush out some of the fibers in the dubbing to make it shine a little bit and and give a little bit of volume to it okay so then I come to the body uh, and the ribbings and I'm going to use our uh, hollow braid uh, and I'm going to do it in two colors uh, I will have uh, here we go where is this I will do a silver body and I will do a purple ribbing so I'll start by tying in the ribbing and then I tie in the body material on top of that should say that on some of these flies I actually put the tail on if I do it I I will use also a uh, fluorescent uh, magenta uh, floral fiber or tail fiber we were still working with our tail fiber it will be soon be up but most of these flies I actually don't have a tail on them I just tie them this way so I move up the thread, I take the braid and I make sure I cover all the tying thread and I work my way up to about half of the body and I make sure that I overlap so I get a body that is growing. So I get a tapered form on the whole fly. Cut it off. Uh, I'll go on to the glitz material. I use uh, black glitz. Here I want the long fiber dubbing uh, so I can brush it out and that it can blend with the hackle. I dub it in. This is even more easy or easier to put on. Just make sure you don't to take too many fibers at the time. Just dub on a little bit, cover up the thread and go back and forth and build up a fairly heavy body. The key with dubbing is that all the fibers needs to be in contact with the tying thread. If they are, it's very, very uh, simple. Okay, and I save about four or five millimeters of the medium to tie most of the fly onto the medium tubing. Look how much I have and then put the thread in front. Okay, so on the regular hackle one, I put a Cox hackle in there. And for those of you who, who uh, subscribe to our packs, there will be materials to, to tie all the three versions. So there will be some co black cock hackles in there if you want to do that. But I was going to show you now how I do uh, that I did on the original Barrett Bimbo where I use an ostrich feather and I hackle with this. Uh, 
The trick here is that there are so many fibers on this. If I tie this in, it's gonna be pretty overdressed. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna strip one side of this feather. And when I do that, I have to think what way am I, I am uh, winding this. And I'm winding this away from me. I'm winding the ribbing away from me the other way. So I'm crossing over every turn. So I'll take away this part. And uh, you get a very, very heavy feather to wind on it's hard and it can be pretty difficult you see how stiff this is i'll need all of that like that and i tie it in underneath and the trick here to, is that now i need to have quite a lot of thread here to make sure this is really staying there okay cut it off Pull it out a little bit and now I'm going to show you uh, another one of our tools it's a uh, uh, it's um, a hackle plier and the thing is that those of you who've seen me tie before know that I tie most of my flies with my fingers not the, uh, with the uh, hackle plier but it's handy to have one and this, oh, I should show you maybe, this is one of these that is swirling. It's got a little uh, rubber thing, meaning that you, it's flexing a bit, so you don't pull off the hackle as easy. And it's got one of these very firm grips. So I put this on and I start by doing one turn, then, I move this back, so I'm going to do four turns. And it can be a little tangle a little bit. When I have my fourth turn, I take the ribbing. And the good thing with the SSS braid is that you spin it. You can spin it down to exactly how thick you want it. Now we're going to take this away. Just hold this, take it away. And I make sure now that I don't tangle too many strands here. And I just tie this in, crossing over every turn. And this way, the hackle will be super strong. Tie it in underneath. Quite a few turns of thread. And cut it away. Take away the little tip I have here. And what I've done here now is that I've done a hackle that will create a lot of volume. It will also create a lot of motion to the fly. Take the mean brush again, and I brush this, and make sure I get some of these uh, glitz fibers to mix with the hackle. See, it's so mean, it'll take my thread too. Uh, here we go. So, what I'm going to do now is that I will quit this now and I will do uh, another version of a hackle. But I just wanted to show you now how you work with the ostrich feather if you want to, want to use it as a body hackle and also what kind of motion and uh, Actually, what I think it's it's a pretty fantastic hackle. And remember also that the ostrich fibers will slim down a lot when they get wet. So, okay, this is now uh, the one kind of body on the on the croquen. Uh, it could have been, I could have tied the other one with the regular cog hackle too, but I, I felt that was unnecessary. So I take this away. 
And I actually prepared one here. I uh, just did the little uh, tag and the little bot. And uh, I'm gonna keep on doing this from here. So I put the thread on again. And um, now I will show you one of the uh, little nerdy things with uh, with doing uh, <laughs> uh, uh, that you can do with the with the braids, and you can use three braids. And I think this is pretty cool, actually. Uh, I do a magenta, uh, evil magenta, and the Mickley blue, the purple one. And I tie in those two first together. And as before, I tie them in underneath. Then I take the silver, that's going to be the body. And this is the same as I did on the other one with the, with the body. I do this and I uh, cover up all the thread, pull it hard and overlap so it grows and I can go a little back and forth here if I want. Good thing with this braid is that it's so thin that you won't see the layers and I tie it in underneath. Okay same with the dubbing again bit of the glitz spin it on you see how long these fibers are they're up to eight centimeter long meaning that you can brush them out a lot and uh, that's uh, i don't see the purpose with using uh dubbing actually if you don't brush it so uh it's kind of crazy to have a short fiber dubbing on a salmon fly where you brush it and uh, or you don't brush it it's even worse but you brush it and all the fibers will come loose okay so i'll create this fat body here again and this time i can even put on a little more making this look a little heavier than before Make sure it's heavier in the front and in the back so it tapers. And since I'm going to do a different hackle now, I'm going to put on the ribbing before I put on any hackle. And what I do here, what I wanted to show you is uh, uh, a little trick here what you can do. You can take two and you will uh, spin one of them first and then you spin the other one. And you spin them as hard as you want on a small fly I spin them more and then I take them and I spin them together this way I get a really really nerdy uh, pretty cool I think actually ribbing and I put this on make sure I put the uh, here we go and I do uh, my four turns And now I got I get the ribbing that will change color a little bit. It's pretty cool. I think the fish will care. I don't think so, especially not in the dark. But it's it's a nice little fancy trick that you can do. And it's always fun to have a fly that looks good. Okay, take this. Make sure I put this on really hard. Take the mean brush and I brush it out. Make sure I have now a lot of dubbing so I get a bit of uh, volume to this. Also translucent. For the night fly it's not that important but uh, for a fly you fish in daytime it's really important. Okay, so here we have a few little too long I can just take him away here we have a different body it's uh, uh, the same pattern but I'm gonna hackle this now in the butterfly way and uh, either you have one already that I've used the tip on like this or you just take one feather 
and you cut away the tip and the tip here can be really good to have uh, when you tie uh, a small fly where you want one or two turns of really soft moving hackled fibers. So I take this and I strip it off in the bot and I see how long I want it. I want it to be a little bit longer or at least as long as the tube. And you can see this is now very flat. If I tie this in now, it will stand like this. I don't want that. I want this to be flat on top of the uh, body. So what I do is that I pull this over my thumbnail like this. Oh, here we go. It broke. Some of them do. Now it's a little shorter, which means this cannot be used on that one. This I have to use on a smaller fly. So I'll take this one then, where uh, this is not destroyed the other one, but uh, I have to use it on a smaller fly. And I curb this so it's curved like that, meaning that I can put it onto the fly like this and it'll be flat on top. Looks at it at least as long as the tubing, make sure it's right on the center. If the feather curves one way or another, you can also pull it over your thumbnail and make it straight. So this is a different, this is the butterfly way of putting the hackle on. And the good thing with this is that, if you remember what I said, we want the silhouette and we want the, the the movement in the fly. This way of hackling gives a lot of silhouette and it also gives a lot of motion in the fish per perspective. They see it down here, they don't see what's happening here, they see this. Especially on a night fly, it's supposed to fish a bit high. So, this is a really neat way I think of, of hackling, especially these night flies. Okay, so I'll keep on with phosphor. I'm gonna take uh, two uh, phosphor scent uh, flash fibers and I'm gonna put them in on top of this. And I tie in both at the same time. One or two turns, double back, like I do with all flash materials. This don't really want to go. It's a little stiff, so you have to pull, pull it a little bit. All these phosphorescent material, they are a little bit stiffer. And tie it in. Take those, make sure I cut them in different lengths like this. And the reason I put the, flat, the glow material here in the bottom is that, of course, it will be seen by the fish. Okay. So it's time to put a wing on. It's not going to be a very uh, different wing. I uh, use soft uh, black hair and I divide it into two bunches. Start with uh, the one underneath and that should be bigger, maybe 60-70%. I brush it through my my through my brush just to untangle it. See it's soft and good. I pull up my fingers halfway and you can see how this is very even. And I pull out the center. And I pull this and taper this so I get a nice drop form on the wing before I tie it in. I hold it flat like this, almost one centimeter between my fingers like this, almost one centimeter wide. Move it back so I see I get the tip where I want it and I tie it in. And being a flight tire is almost like being a, what you call the guitarist. You need to keep that thumbnail a little bit because it's important to have it here. I use it all the time to press down and to move jungle cocks and press down hair so I use 
half of the diameter of the tubing like this to create the broad wing that gets the motion in the right perspective, the fish perspective. Okay, and then I'll cut this away. Uh, here we go. A little piece of this feather here, you know, still. Good to have a sharp scissor. I take a little bit of uh, angel hair and here I use silver to get a good contrast between the black. Black and silver is fantastic contrast. Just a few strands, tie them in, one or two turns, double back and spread them so I get them uh, not just coming together in the water. I want them to be uh, mixing with the wing. Okay, so then it's time for the second part of the wing. It's longer, it's uh, thinner, and it needs to be of the best hair you have. It's the wing on top that will swim. I pull it through my brush like this. It's the top, this, that will swim the most. Look so I get a good tapering here now. Very important. I know I'm, I'm saying this in every film, but it's so important to have the long fibers there. I've been looking at flies where I haven't been tapering enough and that they don't swim. Look at that. Looks good. Make sure it's also pull down around the wing. It's easier when you have fewer fibers. Like that. Looks good. And as before, you can feel it. See, so you're sure you have the right tapering with very, very few strands here. This will swim. I then use jungle cock and as I said before I, I also only use domestic uh, birds and I, I form it over my thumbnail to make this feather follow the wing. Use smaller feather than most and I use them longer than most. I don't use only the little eye, I use the whole feather. I think it's much more beautiful actually. And um, you get the question often, is the jungle cock important? And is it possible to catch a fish with that jungle cock? And uh, come on, I've just said that the fish will see him from underneath here. And uh, what we do is that we put the jungle cock on the side. It's pretty obvious this is for the fly tag. Okay, always start with the one on my side. It's easy for me to see that I get it's right. They, then I take this. Normally I twist it a little bit, twist the uh, the fly in the vise to uh, see that I get it right. I can't do that when I tie for you guys here, but I can look at it like this, and I can see that looks okay. And you can see also I try to cut away everything between everything I tie in. Uh, it's much better than to leave everything and try to cut everything after, afterwards. Now I take a, just a tiny little drop of glue here. Use support by my finger and put a little bit on there. Here we go. And this little drop will do, may turn this from being the weakest part to the strongest part of the fly. Okay, putting on uh, the butterfly hackle flat like this. The only hackle I tie in here is a soft hackle. And these move very, very nicely. And the only 
thing there for, or there's two things, it's, it's creating that extra motion, but also to help build the profile of the fly and to build that drop form. So I need to have a little bit of uh, material here. Uh, okay, I always tie it in in the tip like this. I tie in all front hackles in the tip. I want the longest and the softest uh, fibers in the front. Tie this in and uh, try to double this. It can be a bit tricky to double the, the soft tackles because they are all over the place. Uh, but it's not that super important if one or two fibers get tangled, but just do this and uh, use my new fantastic little hackle plier and it makes it fairly easy like that tie it in move the fibers back with my fingers and put a few turns this will help do the little drop form that we need here in the front okay so now i'm gonna tie in one more thing here i'm gonna use uh, uh rubber legs and are rubber legs good or not they are something that tires and especially maybe salmon fishermen <laughs> disagree about i use them uh, for my night flies because there's one thing that's good with these and that is the vibration they will create sound in the water and sound on a night fly can be pretty good i think i start by tying in two of them underneath and uh, since we in your packs have put uh, see so we get them where we want them pull them a little bit i don't want them too long and i want them to be down uh, and uh, cut them away and since we in your packs use two different colors i'm going to use two colors too does it really matter i don't think so uh, the the important thing here is that they are phosphorescent and that they really will glow in the dark when i tie them in i spread them between my fingers and i put on the two ones on top make them a little bit longer but remember if you tie in rubber legs too long they will not move they will only slim down they need to be so short so they actually stand out from the fly like that then they will do good and then they will uh, create that vibration or sound see where uh, this one is it too long yes a little bit take away a little bit from that one okay put tying in a lot of things here but uh, the last thing i'm going to tie in is a little bit of deer hair and it's not going to be a muddler head, but just a little bit of deer hair. And the good thing here again is that these are fairly straight fibers. They will uh, stand out and they will also create sound or vibration. I do them in two bunches. I take the natural tips and put them backwards. Not too long, just a little bit. Make sure I spread those down so I have them at least on half the diameter. And then I do two or three turns. Take a little bit more. Do, oh, do the same. Underneath, pull this back. I am in one or two turns, three, and then I just 
separate this, make sure I can work down the thread and put a few turns of thread in front. Now I can do like this, I can start trimming those. They should trim down a little bit, be shorter in the front and like this. But it's easier, I think, to do this when I take the fly out of the box. So what I do now is that I take a comb on this on a lot of my flies I use turbos. The good with the turbo is that it will open up for this super soft materials I have here and to create that uh, turbulent stream where this soft material can work and to ca can create uh, motion. So phosphorescent, this glows crazy and actually it loads so good so you in the old days we needed to load them with flashlights or telephones or or any light we can find these ones are so highly uh, phosphorescent they will pick up the little light we have even on a what we think it's pitch black night you do your cast pull it up and it will load up and you will have it glowing for you in the water Take away the material, little bit of glue, support. Okay, that was a little too little. Here we go. Uh, take the thread, pick up the glue. Ready. Take the cone, push it down. So you push it down tight, super tight. Take away the thread. And now I take the fly out of the vise. I will uh, use support when I cut this, but two to three mil. Hold it up, Newton's law. Make this melt down and open up like a little flower for me so I get a nice hole for my leader too. Okay, then I hold back the materials I have here and I pulled out a little bit of the deer hair and then I just cut it a little bit like this so I get it to be uneven. And if I want to have a really fat fly, I don't need to cut away so much. If I just want to have a little bit of sound to it, uh, I think that the hackles I tied in will make a fly that is enough bulky, uh, enough heavy. So I'll take away some of this. Ready. Crocan in a butterfly edition where I have the hackle from the creating motion from the fish perspective. I have a few, pull a little bit in this, a few of the rubber legs that will also help. Uh, with the phosphorus, phosphorescent part. Here, it's too much material, I don't see what I do here. Uh, here we go. Put it there, it's easy for you to see when I talk about it. Um, a really fat fly that will have a lot of profile, a really good fat profile. It will have the soft materials, the fibers that will, will, will be, um, uh, spreading out like this from the butterfly wing and it will have the phosphorescent uh, rubber legs uh, if you, you do one or two colors it doesn't really matter it has the the phosphorescent tubing and the phosphor in the front and i think this is superb night fly and if you like to do them this way 
the uh, butterfly way or if you want to tie them with the regular hackle uh, more traditional way uh, or if you want to that was that one sorry the regular hackle or if you want to do them with a body hackle where you tie in the ostrich like a body hackle it's it's a matter of taste, I would say. I would say that butterfly one that I tied now will be the fly that will swim best of the three. Um, the regular one will be more traditional, have a more traditional shape and uh, also a very, very nice night fly. Uh, but it doesn't have that extra, extra motion to it. So, talking a lot, but those of you who have been writing to me, been thanking you, because I say what I do all the time, but maybe some of you think I talk too much too. Anyway, Kraken, three different ones, and I hope you will uh, try them, and I hope you will go out now in the dark and uh, and, will catch a few good fish on those. For me, now, the pitch dark, the fish will fly without the phosphor. I don't know. I, f I really feel I like to have that little phosphor to the fly, to have them glow a bit. Okay, so thank you for uh, watching this. A uh, little odd fly maybe. But also we have to remember that night flies and daytime flies and flies with fish deep or high up or in the fast or slow water, they need to be different. The fly is all the fish will see. It's the fly that will create the take. And of course the way you fish them too. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it.